we need some kind of like ding, 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 ding. Some of those cool sound effects they use on our radio shows yeah. to announce a celebratory episode. Yeah. Well, this is it. Okay. Well, this we, is could, the one. we could have a new like play one of your other songs as an <laughs> intro and people will be like, what? That's so complicated. No. Okay. Uh, how about we clink? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see if we get that on the well, mic. Do it by my in. mic. Do it by my mic though. Okay. So you can hear it. Ooh, could you hear that? <laughs> That's the sound of episode number 100. What? Yes. Ding, I'm ding, so ding, excited. Ding. Wait, I'll clink somewhere. <laughs> what are we clinking? We are clinking all natural Virgil, zero sugar root beer. Guys, yeah. this is sweetened with stevia. This is one of my favorite in a glass bottle treats. Well, think of how much more fun this episode would be if it was like my favorite glu <laughs> glutenberg. Which you know, that? dark ale. Mm. It says it's like the best gluten free beer. But I know nothing of these things. <laughs> if you guys You'll... remember, I don't do alcohol, so this is the closest thing to. In fact, sometimes I've wondered, what if somebody saw these bottles in my trash somehow? They <laughs> think it's alcohol. Like I'm thinking, well, I guess most people have these I mean, bottles. In their trash. I mean, you're like this much fun without alcohol. I think it would be funny with <laughs> a beer or two. Oh you. my god! I either would be crazy or I would be like sleepy. I think like yeah. one, of, one of the two. But yeah. I think I knew early on it was maybe not the right path to go for me. So I think I trust my intuition yeah. on that one. I've trusted it thus far. I, gets me pretty far i'd yeah, say let me try this virgil this is pretty decent so it's root beer out of a glass bottle with ah. zero sugar is it okay uh, is it okay to have drinking noises on the yes. podcast Just as long eating. as it's not eating noises okay right. so this is like a diet root beer oh, but without so the crap good. like it's not going to be sweetened with stuff yeah. that you don't want um it literally just uses stevia and monk fruit and urethral um it's so good and it feels like a nice treat. And I do this with my kids sometimes, something special. We use Zevia also, like as a soda. Okay. But uh, it's nice in the glass bottle. It's kind of fun. All right. Yeah. So why well, are we celebrating again? Well, this episode is brought to you by <laughs> All Natural Virgils, Zero Sugar Root Beer. Can we get them to pay something for that? <laughs> <laughs> and it's also brought to you by a family of birds in the tree. <laughs> and somebody's right lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And potentially my children that might come down complaining who I just put down for nap so that we could podcast outside. We're outdoors. We're in the great outdoors or somebody's backyard, yeah. <laughs> which is still the great outdoors, which is my house. Um, and we're podcasting for our 100th episode. Yeah, but that, that bird is, is a little loud. I don't know if the audience can hear it. I wonder if they can hear. I can still hear the lawnmower. But guys, okay. this is what we do. We're just, yeah. we're adaptable. We yeah. go with the flow. Yeah. As you know, we, we are not using our original podcast studio and we've done a few episodes in my garage, but then we thought, hey, why don't we try Melissa's house and, and outside is the best and place to And try we are. <laughs> that's exactly what we're doing. Garage is now a home office. Um, and so that's taken. The kids are sleeping. So this is the only place to do it. And we like the fresh air, but yeah. Uh, comes with that some extra noises so if you're wondering what that is we're outside and that's what we're doing today we're celebrating our 100th episode of the vaccine conversation podcast we technically already got to 100 but we removed a few episodes I know. <laughs> so this is the official 100 yeah and instead of covering this episode with a bunch of you know coverage of corruption and the <laughs> off a lot of the awful things that are kind of going on right now we decided to make this a celebratory episode and we are gonna maybe reminisce a little bit yeah. but also we're going to discuss some of our favorite reviews that we've gotten and kind of talk about maybe talk about them a little bit and just really have fun and dr bob's eating some peanut butter balls oh dude homemade yes. peanut butter chocolate They're crispy in the shape of a square yes i still call them peanut butter balls <laughs> because rolling them takes so much extra work and so instead i just make it and then i put it into a glass pan cover it with chocolate and cut them into squares because that's the kind of time i got <laughs> <laughs> to, com to commit to these things so and they're really 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 good and they're peanut butter balls but actually in this recipe it's just almond butter and sunflower butter mm. um, with crisp rice cereal a little maple syrup vanilla salt and mm. a little uh, refined oh, coconut oil. It's like oil. totally soft and melty now that it's been I know the sun, and then but... the, the top is covered mm. with a combination of lilies 
no sugar chocolate chips that are sweetened with stevia, mm. and then with 65% dark chocolate, so I do a mix, then you mix a little refined coconut oil. Tip to those who may not know this, unrefined coconut oil is going to taste like coconut. Refined coconut oil is the benefit of the oil, which is great for baking, with zero taste. Okay. So what's nice is if you don't like coconut, you can still use refined coconut oil in your baking um, to replace any other types of oils or fats. Um, and there's going to be zero coconut uh, residual. And so what's nice is I used a little bit of that. It helps to thin your chocolate when you're melting it uh, so it doesn't clump up. And um, I'm not understanding anything you're saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are you saying? Well, there are many people Baking out there that are like, <laughs> they're like, they get it. They get it. So this is actually, they're, they're pretty decent. I have to admit, they're pretty good. So uh, Dr. Bob got those today uh, for the, his mobile much. podcast, <laughs> yes, the mobile yes. podcast. And we have our root beers and we're going to celebrate. So yeah, shall I welcome us in? We never kind of welcomed let's do us it. in. Sure. Yeah. All right. You got it. Now. Sure. Ready? Right now. Go. Okay. This time. No. Ready? I'm ready. Go. Okay, I'm what are you doing? <laughs> Just let the doctor speak. <laughs> You're reading reviews already? Oh, yeah. So sorry. <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> Welcome in to the Vaccine Conversation with Melissa and Dr. Bob for our 100th episode. Yay! Another root beer clink. Does that deserve another root beer clink? There All you right, go. There you go. Okay, this is one zero zero yes. For a podcast, we never sort of thought was necessarily going <laughs> to go anywhere, do anything. Like, we hadn't really thought about it. You didn't oh, think I'm sorry. it was going to go anywhere. <laughs> I thought it was going to go nowhere. <laughs> and, <laughs> And then, oh man, what a pinnacle that we were just at before our tour too, before what's gone on the last couple yeah. of months. Mm -hmm. And I cannot wait to get back to that point because there are people messaging me every day, when you guys coming to our state, you know, we want to see you. So I am so looking forward to that tour. And until that thing's complete, I will not rest. So um, that's, that's our big focus for as soon as we're able. And again, certain states are lifting restrictions sooner than others and right. have restrictions on gathering size. It's going to be different. So we may find states off the beaten path to be able to hold some of these and yeah. people might want to travel to those locations so we can do this sooner rather than later. Uh -huh. Yeah. What, what say you? Yeah. Well, I, I feel like we might end up in Texas first because they're... They're God probably going to be Texas, quick huh? to uh, lift re restrictions, right? <laughs> Remember, was it last episode you said indeed? Was that the last one? Did I? Or that two again? Remember, we were like, it's very nice to be calm. Indeed. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Did you guys like calm, Melissa? I was very calm. In well, fact, I don't remember the last hour. I think I was half asleep. Like, <laughs> asleep. <laughs> because remember, you're writing the description and you were yeah. like, and we give advice on how to talk to legislators. <laughs> I was like, wait, did we do that? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And then I thought back later, oh, yeah, that yeah. must have been when I was half yeah. asleep. Wow, that's funny. It you was sure late. This is it just, was like <laughs> this is just root beer. I, I yeah. Was I wasn't funny. even. I didn't even have anything that day. But it was like I think we finished at eleven thirty at night, so it was mm -hmm. way past my bedtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if you're wondering what the topic of today's episode is, wonder no longer because there is no topic. Wait, didn't I just say that? So that was on the intro, though. Oh. I guess. Well, okay. So it's not official until it's after the welcome in. Oh. But, okay. Okay. But yeah, no, you're right. We already said that. Yeah, we're. We're just going to read some fun reviews. You're right. Just chat and reminisce and maybe uh, maybe this is therapeutic for you and I just to have a normal conversation instead of talking about, do you know what's going on in Sweden and New yeah. York? And, Actually, I was and, thinking how nice to not have to do a lot of research for an episode. Because mm -hmm. yeah. believe it or not, there's a lot of research that goes into every episode. I mean, like, obviously, you know, when you're in the spotlight on a topic, like if you're going to do an episode on aluminum and you've got all these listeners that are going to be listening, you want to make sure you're bringing the best right. of the best. Mm -hmm. And the thing with me is I'm always afraid I'll miss something. <laughs> I'm always afraid, okay, I got these yeah. five studies, but what if I missed something even better than that? So I tend to even go like further because I want to make sure I've got 
all the best of aluminum as if as if I would have researched aluminum for 20 years and put together my favorite five studies, which of course I haven't researched it that long. And a lot of these topics are new. And so we don't have the opportunity to research for years and years and years on one topic to bring it to you. And so we're kind of like coronavirus. This is all new stuff. So we've got to find whatever new stuff is out right now. Mm -hmm. And um that's the uh, the question I posed on my on my page. I'm thinking of making some Vax Vax cards oh, yeah. for coronavirus, yeah. for COVID nineteen specifically. And I was thinking, what pieces of information would be on a card that will still be valid in four and five and six months from now? Right. Because you can't just do what's right now. Right. So I have two sets of of Vax Vax cards already, and. All of those things will still be valid in a year or two years from now because it's part of the vaccine program. It's part of the reality that we've witnessed and seen with data over the last, you know, 20, 30 years. We we're able to go back and see this stuff. Yeah. But with coronavirus, it's really unique because it's new and there isn't a ton of data that is like over the years. And so we're kind of everything's changing. It's constantly changing. But right. I know there are a lot of people that will help want to they want to help educate people about this um, because definitely it's not the same narrative that we're seeing on the news. Right. And in order for people to feel educated, they have to have those little bullet points of facts. But it's like, but which ones? Which ones will still I know. last I know. four or five, six months from now? Because I don't want to do anything that's going to, you know, not going to be worth anything in a, in a month from now. Yeah, but I worry that um, stores might uh, make rules against handing out like, you know, vac you know, cards like that, like putting out uh, like flyers, like like anyone, you're going to hand out flyers for any reason, or put you know public service announcements out. Um, and the Vax Vax cards are a fantastic tool, but I, I worry with coronavirus, are they going to start like shutting that kind of stuff down? And well, it's not that, just that for leaving at stores. Sometimes it's just to give to people. Maybe yeah, you're, yeah, you're totally giving it to your true. neighbors, yeah, you're yeah. dropping it off on a front porch of yeah. people that you know or totally, leaving it that way. Yeah, totally. It's more of an accessible card with with some way to link into more information. Right, right. And and rallies because, you know, more and more people are going to have, you know, uh, reopen America rallies. And, yeah, so you'll need some good tools for that. Yeah, I mean, I so. think, I don't know, I think, I think that this discussion, even though it's polarizing... It's such an important one to have, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Like this, specifically the coronavirus thing. Like right. I see this coronavirus entire situation as such a parallel to the vaccine debate. Absolutely. To me, this Huge is, parallels. This is, it's a, yeah. a bigger stage yeah. because now it involves the world. Yeah, but the, the, something that's kind of in our favor, you know, people who are opposed to mandates is, you know, the coronavirus issue is basically divided into two sides, you know, keep America two closed, very you know, uh, we're scared sides. about coronavirus or reopen America and we need to weather our way through coronavirus, two different groups. Whereas the, the vaccine debate is almost, we almost feel like we're a minority who's opposing mandates um, and the majority of people are in favor of vaccines and don't even know it's an issue suddenly all the same arguments mm -hmm. have divided the nation almost down the middle. It's almost 50-50. Mm -hmm. And part of it is like Republican and Democrat. Right. And, and it's very political. So suddenly all the issues that have drawn us into the, the debate against mandatory vaccination and being pro-informed consent, we can now, we almost now have half the nation on our side and how those very same issues apply to coronavirus. So if we can sort of merge the two uh, right. issues together, I, I, and I, you know, I was going to talk about this in an upcoming episode. Um, one of your missions as you're talking to people now about coronavirus is you can say, see, this is what I've been talking about with the vaccine conversation for so many mm -hmm. years, you know, where the government sometimes gets something wrong, where the scientists have a narrative and and the media are covering something up and the media are pushing a certain narrative you see them doing that with coronavirus and you see them becoming polarizing politically well that's the exact right. same things that happening with the vaccine conversation now you sort of get where i'm coming from and we might actually bring a lot more people into the health freedom movement and and in the vaccine side of this conversation by helping them see the parallels. And I think that's maybe something that people can start uh, throwing into their conversations as they're talking about coronavirus. Well, yeah, I think a lot of people that are mainstream are understanding that 
the news is very divided on this. Mm-hmm. On one news network, it is, this is the end of the world. And on another news network, it's it's not that big of a deal. We need to get back to work. Right. Uh, we have unemployment. And, you know, it's, it's so two very, very distinct messages. Mm-hmm. And any rational person would say, how could there be two different messages about the same thing? And like anything, if my feeling is, if you have two different sides of it, then that means it's a complex issue that can't be black or white and it can't be right. decided either way. Right. So it doesn't, not, neither has to be the right way. The fact that there are two sides, that is the story. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like with yeah, the vaccine yeah, no, thing, totally. you, they can go, well, look at all these studies that show that vaccines are safe. Okay, but look at all these studies that show dangers. The fact that those other studies exist mm-hmm. means to me, I cannot side on the side. I can't side on any side where there is opposing information. That's the point is that you just have to right. be open to, to saying this is good for some, not for others. And because of that, we cannot make this black or white. And I think some people are starting to see there is a layer of corruption here. There is a layer of political motivation behind mm-hmm. it. And also I'm seeing a lot of people that are very mainstream as it relates to vaccines, but would not get this particular vaccine. And they understand this has been rushed. Right. They understand that it skipped animal trials. They understand that, um, the prior attempts at coronavirus vaccines have failed. And so there are some who get every other vaccine that still wouldn't get this one. And even that is the opening of, of awareness and understanding about vaccine choice. Right. And, and if you're talking to somebody who is very pro-vaccine and but tells you they would have a lot of hesitation about a coronavirus vaccine, you need to explore that with them and kind of get down, you know, into the details of that because then they can maybe better understand why you've chosen not to give your child some of the vaccines Mm -hmm. or why you've chosen, why you have concerns about safety research and rushing the approval process. Because I'll tell you, in some of these city groups, you'll go, you'll hear somebody go, oh, the only reason you want to uh, reopen the, the state again or reopen the country again is because this hasn't affected somebody you know. Just wait until it affects somebody you know, and then you'd have a different view on it. And I'm thinking, that's the thing we've been saying about vaccine injury for years. Yes. Right? Yeah. But nobody yeah. wants to claim it then. Now, all of a sudden, yeah. somebody wants to claim it. It's only... Like it only becomes real to somebody when it becomes part of their experience. Right. And this idea that just, I mean, look, at we know the reality is coronavirus is mild for almost everybody. Like it's the smallest, smallest portion has survival rate of basically 99%, um, if not higher, based on full data. But that means there are going to be some people are affected, right? The same right. thing with vaccines. Right. However, when we've used that argument before... Yeah. Hey, until this happens to your child, you won't understand. Yeah. And but everybody calls us crazy lunatics. Yeah. And then you've got over here. If you said, "Oh, I know somebody that died of coronavirus," they'd be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Condolences." Right? Yeah. Like, and it's just it's it's just such an interesting parallel that I'm noticing between. I, I've said this before. I feel like the six years that I've been fully invested in this vaccine debate has 100% primed me for this situation because you know you know early oh, yeah. on i oh, saw yeah. red flags right oh, away yeah. i was like not false not to be confused with false flags red flags i saw a lot of things that made me think hey this is like it's almost like triggering a, you know these memories of going well, i've seen that before or this seems a lot like this or it looks like yeah. they're using the same techniques here and same tactics here and that made me right away go something's up yeah there's something here what are you going to read yeah that? well yeah that, that kind of uh um, you know, speaking of what you just said about uh, I'm curious. about what you wrote about coronavirus, <laughs> um, this uh, we want to read you some of our favorite recent reviews and things that really spoke to us. And what you just said reminded me um, of the first review I wanted to talk about. Um, this is from uh, reviews on iTunes, and we've had like some like 1,700 reviews, more than 1,700 reviews, which is amazing. Um, and this one comes from Silence Six Five Four. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to name the people on my reviews by the way okay. just so you know. Okay, all right. Um cuz we'll probably butcher every single one of these <laughs> names. <laughs> but this is about COVID and and this person basically writes the information they presented has been shared by thousands of doctors worldwide. And he asks, is Melissa a doctor? No. This might be where you got your idea for your Facebook post. No, actually, I've already done it first. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe he's responding to your Facebook post. Is Is Melissa a doctor? No. But she is highly educated, articulate, and data-based. 
Dr. Bob is the perfect balance to her zeal. So I guess maybe you're zealous and I'm I'm boring. I don't know. I don't know but, <laughs> no, but and you're but, snacking. <laughs> no, but but you start the things you started saying like six or seven weeks ago at the very beginning of mm -hmm. this is the exact same thing half of America is now saying. Your exact words, your exact arguments. You might have been literally one of the first people that I saw to look at the data, analyze the data, and come up with projections and, and pr predictions and ideas about what's really going to be right or wrong about the situation. And so I, I, I love that you were able to do that. And I think that's, that's one reason why we can rely on you so heavily as, as a data analyst, because that side of you is so, is so sharp. And literally, it's not like you, it's not like you invented all these arguments and other no, people, no. those other people came to the same conclusions independently. Right. When people look at the data, right. they make some certain conclusions. And now what seemed unpopular six or seven or eight weeks ago for you and I to be saying has now be become what half of America and what many you know, across the world are saying. Mm -hmm. And so I just appreciate this this um, review and how they kind of articulated that. Well, I remember somebody writing on um, a, po a comment on somebody's post, it's a mutual friend of ours, writing, I love Melissa and Dr. Bob, but I think they're wrong on this one. Mm -hmm. And this was, you yeah. know, eight weeks ago or yeah. seven weeks ago. Yeah. And basically alluding to the fact that it's irresponsible to not think that this really is the apocalypse that it is. Right. And everybody at that time really thought what was starting in New York City was going to happen in every other city across the country. And Which the would truth, have been terrible. And the truth right. is, yeah. it didn't happen anywhere else in, in right. the entire country. Not even one other city got like it is in New York. Right. And if a virus is a virus, it should be acting the same way across the right, board. Right. So there are other factors, and we've talked about those in our in our prior episodes. But I remember it pained me a little when I saw that comment and said, mm -hmm. I think they're wrong about this. Yeah. And deep down, I'm going, am I wrong about this? You know, this is what I do. I, I you know, believe it or not, before, <laughs> before I say anything, I'm already <laughs> having the back and forth in my mind. Yeah. It's exhausting. <laughs> But that's the way my brain works is I am literally like a set of scales, a balance scales, and I, I will think one thought and then I will give myself the counter to that thought and then the original self will go back to the counter of the original thought and I'm trying to think of all the arguments against the thing I'm saying in, to begin with. You know, it's kind of like a lawyer does. You're, mm -hmm. I, and that's just the kind of brain I've always had. Again, it can be very exhausting because I do it over simple things like chocolate or vanilla. <laughs> if I go chocolate, then I'll do this, but then I'll miss this out. But if I do vanilla and it's like these kind of questions, <laughs> these kind of questions I'm having, this is the discussion all the time in my brain about everything. And it's because I don't want to make the wrong decision. I've, I was always that kid. I was a rule follower. Believe it or not, I was a total rule follower. I can't mm -hmm. stand conflict. I get really uncomfortable when um, people are don't like me and have something against me. Like mm. this it plagued my entire earlier part of my life, literally until I turned 40, when all of a sudden I was like, I don't give a sh <laughs> beep. So, so my point though, is that I've weighed both of these, these sides already. And so all the things people come back at me with, mm -hmm. I know what they're thinking because I've thought them too before right. I even put yeah. my opinion yeah. out there. Yeah. So when I saw that person, that, that comment, I'm thinking, oh no, like again, I second guess myself. Am I wrong on this? I'm like, no, I don't think so. I mean, God, I keep going through stuff and it keeps looking like this and this. And then every time I'd see another expert and I would share that information because I'm like, okay, this validates what I already knew to be true more and more and more data. And before you know it, you're, you know, you have enough to go off of, but it's a risky thing to put yourself out there. And I didn't actually pick any reviews related to coronavirus because I know it's a little bit of right, a touchy right, subject yeah, for a lot of people. Yeah. But, um, and I know that there are many of you that maybe this coronavirus topic is uh, not something you want to go into right now. It's right. just too soon for you to kind of delve into this uh, mm -hmm. and the way that we are. And you liked the other topics that we have and which have all been still data-based and well-researched and things. And so that's where a lot of my reviews um, come from. I'll start with my first one. Okay. Here's my first review. Okay. So here's one. Now you can also, not just iTunes, you guys can give reviews on Immunity Education Group Facebook page mm -hmm. and there's right. a place to review. Uh, which I like, and they are either amazing or they're 
people that hate us that are that are saying they don't recommend this, but there's no in between. So here's one. Um, I'm not going to name who it's from, but this is five months ago. The information shared here is immensely informative and absorbing. This is not an anti-vaccine haven, but rather a place where real science performed by real scientists is presented by two people that are extremely educated, passionate, and charming. It is challenging to find honest dialogue regarding vaccines due to mass propaganda and censorship. Vaccines are considered a one-size-fits-all miracle, and from that misunderstanding sprouted a my way or the highway mentality, which only the positive aspects of vaccines are allowed to be discussed. The truth seeks to uncover what is real, from what is misinformation in a tireless pursuit of credibility and justice. Thank you to these two brave human beings that have the courage to speak the truth. I'm overflowing with gratitude <laughs> and a really, really nice yeah. um, review. And I like what she was saying. This is not anti-vaccine. And those one star reviewers that want to give us the review that says this is completely anti-vaccine and we're completely one sided. Trust me, if you've met people that are extremely anti-vaccine, we are not like them. And, yes. and whether you know it or not, we get criticized for not being extreme enough. Right. So right. we get criticized for being too mainstream within the larger community in which we rest. But there is a difference of opinion across the board here, just like anything else. Um, it's not one or the other. And I appreciate the fact that she's, and, and what I saw the, the theme of all the reviews I'm seeing, this is database, this is well-researched, there's a lot of information, it's scientific, there are studies backing up what they're saying. They know this is not just based on opinion. People are appreciating the amount of actual science and data that backs up what oh, yeah. we're saying. And oh, yeah. I was annoyed. One person was like, oh, there's there's no access to the real information that they claim to be real. But yeah, there is. We have a website. And if you haven't viewed oh, it, no. it's immunityed, I-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-E-D dot org. And you can click on podcasts and you can find our sources page um, that goes through our podcast episodes. You can find links to studies and articles that we've covered. So we absolutely yeah. do back up every single thing that we say. Yeah, this was a review from... Uh... Uh, Jana Lynn IEO. See, this know. is why I'm not naming yeah. names. <laughs> yeah, but, but she points out, you know, information from credible sources and doesn't get into conspiracy theories. And I think that's one thing that's been always been very important to us. When you talk to people who, who are very openly anti-vaccine and they're against the entire program, um, there, there's, you know, a lot of science behind that viewpoint, but there's also a lot of, you know, a lot of unproven ideas or conspiracy ideas that kind of weigh into that as well. And, and I think we just tend to steer clear of that, you know, if we share our opinions and then we also share data, but there are so many things we could get into sure. and could branch out on, but I feel like they're not, uh, there's not enough data on those things yet to really make uh really make a good factual discussion on that. And our goal is really irrefutable arguments, mm -hmm. things that whether you agree with them or not, or believe them or not, it doesn't matter because it's irrefutable. There is yeah. science to back yeah. up what we're saying. Yeah. Again, even if it's not popular, it's science-based. Yeah. yeah. I like what Ashley JC uh, wrote. Uh, she wrote, it's, and I, I love this. It's full of so much information. I feel I should have already known, but didn't. And there's another review you're going to read as well, where a lot of people know everything there is to know about vaccines, right. but then they'll hear something. They're right. like, wow, that, that's, an, a, that's something I never would have thought piece, of. Just one piece, one piece, two pieces. Right. And she's, I like how she writes, I'm currently making chili for supper and bawling during episode 38 when Melissa said how she is pro-choice instead of being anti-vaccine after your mm -hmm. children were injured, um, you're pro-choice and you'll continue telling your story in order to share the truth and try to stop vaccine mandates. Well, now we know what her secret ingredient is, tears, <laughs> tears. into her <laughs> special chili. I read that one. I remember yeah. that was so sweet. I love when people can say, I cried along with you on this episode, mm -hmm. or this episode really touched me because uh, it emotionally, I felt it because the, the reality is so many of our listeners are struggling yeah. within this vaccine yeah. debate. And like anybody being on the unpopular side of an argument, it's lonely. It's lonely being attacked. And, and it, it used to be lonely. Now that there's so many of us, though, it's it's way less lonely. But there than are still very vocal people in city groups and things that are just. Mm -hmm. I, I promise you, these people are just committed 
to whatever they said they believed in early on, and they're so hell bent on mm -hmm. keeping that, even if data is showing it's maybe not accurate anymore, they that would be too much for them to have to come back and say, it looks like I was off on this because they were so adamant right. about it. Right. So then they just stay on that road, refusing to see anything else, much like the vaccine debate. I mean, this yeah, is what yeah, I'm saying. The, yeah. the level of people I'm seeing are very much like the super pro mandate, the super troll people that come online and, and really attack you. It's very similar. And when I'm talking about neighbors and local city groups, they adopt this, this uh, narrative and this mindset and the way that they're attacking people instead of going, hey, look, you know what? At the beginning, I kind of thought this, but after I sort of thought this. And, you know, it's okay to change your viewpoint. It's okay to... Um, adapt the more information that you get. <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking selfies of Melissa. I know, geez. I'm just thinking like, how cool doing? this looks though. We're outside podcasting. In my in my balcony on my I mean my <laughs> patio here. Um so I find it really interesting that we have people unwilling to go to a different place with their viewpoint and unwilling to um to maybe backtrack a little and say, oh I made some mistakes. Jeez. <laughs> so here's another review I want to read. And I love this because she had me in the first line. I'm a numbers person. Me too. Mm. She said, I don't read mommy blogs and I don't have an ax to grind. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not anti-vaccine. I love this podcast. I probably listened to most episodes twice or three times by now. Just jam packed with the truth. Dr. Bob and Melissa are so informative in what they podcast about. All of their information is from the FDA, the CDC, the World Health Organization, and straight from scientists and medical professionals' mouths. If you're a parent or will be one day, or just a person with a body, it is your responsibility to properly educate yourself, especially when it comes to forcing untested pharmaceutical products into the veins of the public. At least, at least a five-star platform for information. Thank you. And again, um, not a conspiracy theorist, not anti-vaccine, a numbers person. Mm -hmm wanting information and wanting science and feeling like that's what I get when I come here. Yeah. And that was always our goal. Yeah. Um, Samwell 25 on his or her review um, called you a true citizen scientist, um, which I think is a great cool. description of you. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm an honorary said, sheriff I mean... of data, <laughs> like, like one of those honorary sheriffs yes. that get like a little bad. You're a deputy. <laughs> Deputy scientist. No, no, but a citizen scientist. I mean, you you could have gone to a graduate school. You right. could have gotten a doctorate. You could have been a doctor. You're way, way smart enough. And you chose a different path, which I'm, I'm very glad that you did because, I mean, your your musical path has been amazing. And, and but you're, you know, you being a, a mommy and, a, you know, someone active in this fight. I mean, that's that all led you to where you are. But you your brain is still that scientist brain. Right. And you don't have to have gone to medical school to be able to weigh in on the vaccine debate. You you can read the data just like anyone else and understand yeah, I wanna, it. And, and actually, I, on that on that point that you're saying, I want to come back to the whole, but you're not a doctor thing. I want to read something somebody wrote I thought was really great okay. after, after you. You okay. do your next review, just reminding you. Okay, all right. Um, so Sunshine Sarah HB. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say, she's now she's taking selfies. Well, you gave me an idea. <laughs> okay. You turned down an opportunity for a good photo. <laughs> so she writes, uh, she writes, I'm so, <laughs> she wrote. Okay. No more Dr. Virgil's. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Yeah. The root beer. Oh, thing. oh, see the root beer. It's in, it's in quotes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> on the ball. No, um, uh, she writes, I'm so grateful that I was directed to this podcast and the reason why that was important to me was we, we get a lot of, we've had a lot of reviews that people will say, I had no idea this podcast was there. I'm grateful someone told me about it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn more. I'm so glad someone told me about this podcast. That's, you know, if, if you're a listener, if you're an active listener, that's, you know, one of your jobs, I guess, is to tell people about this podcast. And the more tell, the more people you tell... <laughs> You're cut off. Yeah. <laughs> Last call for Dr. Bob. <laughs> Guys, it's only like quarter of his root beer that he's had so far. <laughs> anyway, you get what I'm trying to say. Um, the more people you tell, you know, steer them towards us and then we'll take over and we'll get them involved in the vaccine conversation. And I love hearing that people were brought to this. They didn't just like 
hear that you and I were doing a podcast and they already knew us and they started to listen. I love it when new people come in that didn't even you know have any idea who we were. <laughs> More pictures? You don't know pictures? No, no. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Um, so no. then there's, uh, oh, Mrs. Sassy Pants, maybe from Colorado. She wrote, I didn't want to get depressed. Well, she, she wasn't going to listen to the podcast at first because she didn't want to get depressed mm. at hearing us spreading the ugly truth about vaccines. But guess what? After further urging from a friend, I gave it a shot and I'm not depressed. I'm empowered. Right. And to me, that's that's really exciting because again, I've seen that word a lot, too, in our right. reviews, empowering, yeah. which is what's better than that? I mean, like. I don't want to bring up names, but like Z Dog, let's just say <laughs> MD, Z Dog MD guy. You know, he kind of does outlandish things to kind of uh -huh. draw attention to what he's done, even though he's a medical doctor. His stuff, he doesn't necessarily, I wouldn't say, take it completely seriously, but he tries to either be confrontational or he tries to be goofy or he tries to be whatever. I don't know how many people leave his episodes feeling empowered. Yeah. They might be entertained, mm -hmm. but not empowered. And to me, entertained is for the right now. Empowered is forever. Yeah. And the thing is, is when you are changed as a person and you are inspired to have more conversations with people, then it is like the gift that keeps on giving mm -hmm. versus just being like, oh, I was here in that moment. That was funny and case closed. And um, so when you do see reviews that continue to talk about, I felt more empowered. I felt like I could have these conversations. I'm more brave now. I'm more confident now. It's like those are permanent changes yeah, in some yeah. people. And yeah. I'm still surprised that, um, you know, that we continue to to hear that. It's it's so, so very amazing to mm -hmm. me to hear that. So this whole not a doctor. So I started a, I'm starting a series on my Facebook that's kind of <laughs> like, are you a doctor, Melissa? Are you an epidemiologist, Melissa? Are you an emergency room physician? Are you, you know, are you a virologist? And then Right underneath that, I say, no, but he is, or no, but she is, whoever the person is. And then I'll quote somebody who has that background, and it'll be a viewpoint that has been something I've either brought up, and it backs up what, what I've said already. Um, and it's funny. I get a lot of people commenting on there going, I, I get so frustrated with the whole, but you're not a doctor. And so it's interesting. I, I made a little meme yesterday that I posted about... It needs to be a doctor, but not that doctor. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Not that epidemiologist, not that expert. It needs to be science, but not that science. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is exactly like the vaccine debate. You can say, Dr. Bob, da 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 and they'll go, well, he's a quack. <laughs> right? Oh, sorry if you've never yeah. heard that before. So sorry. <laughs> I guess that was Wait, kind of insensitive. <laughs> just, just so people know, he doesn't like really read anything about himself. So, okay, hypothetically, if somebody said that about you. So it's funny because you can actually say, no, this has been backed up by a doctor or by a nurse or by a researcher or oh, whatever. But not that doctor. Right. And it doesn't count. It's not valid. It means nothing. Uh, unless the, do and we're seeing a ton of that in the coronavirus discussion. You can bring to them eight different doctors around the world that are saying we need to open up the economy because children don't spread this. The mortality rate is very low. There's been a lot of population expo exposure already. And people will still go, that person, that's a publication I would never trust. Or that guy probably has business motivations behind all of this. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to discredit the person. But if the, if the same uh, doctor, virologist, epidemiologist was to say, hey, we need to keep this closed down. They go, see, this doctor says this. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a frustrating thing. So oftentimes when you are not a doctor, same thing with the vaccine debate, you're just a mom, you get that, um, you get people saying, you, you're not qualified to weigh in on this. And so somebody wrote a comment that I thought was really good and said, that the you're not a doctor thing gets so old. Plenty of judges and juries hear medical malpractice suits and suits of other kinds that involve a large volume of medical evidence. One needs to be intelligent and able to understand and weigh factual information and to have done the research and or been exposed to the factual information to have a relevant opinion on a topic. You don't need a medical degree to communicate knowledgeably on a medical issue. As we know from our research, and vaccines. Many doctors have had very little training related to vaccines, epidemiology, and other issues related to infectious disease. Whether or not their opinions are of value depends on whether they have specialized at all in the topic and are exposed to relevant information. By way of comparison, most attorneys don't know anything about patent law or tax law because they haven't specialized in these areas and they would be fools to weigh in on them, even though they're an attorney. See, so I really liked her comment because it makes sense. 
I, I do get feel a little um, intimidated sometimes when somebody goes, oh, where's your medical degree? You know, and, and you're saying, yeah, I know I don't have a medical degree on this, but I do trust my brain mm -hmm. that my brain is able to decipher information. It's, it's able to make use critical thinking skills to make valid and linear thinking patterns that uh, have served me in the past in a variety of ways. I mean, th there was a reason that I think I worked well as a home educator and a tutor and an SAT tutor is that you've got all these different topics you have to do. And you might not be a specialist over here, but because you have the ability to, to take information, conceptualize it and communicate it to others, you should be able to do that on all topics. You're trusting the data. You're trusting the content and the experts to give you that information. And then you assimilate this, put this to a broader objective understanding and communicate it to people. That's what right. anybody's brain should sure. be able to do when you're intelligent as an intelligent person. And that doesn't mean you have to have a degree to be able to do that. That's not to say I would testify as an expert anywhere. Obviously I wouldn't because you have to have the credentials to do that, but it doesn't mean you can't have the conversation. And right. that's kind of what people are making it seem like you're not even, you know, yeah. you don't even have the right to weigh in on it. And it's like, like hell, like <laughs> hell I don't, first of all. And, and you moms out there know that when it comes to your kids, you go to yeah. the ends of the earth to find the information that you need to protect them. And so like she's saying in this, um, this comment, you sometimes will come across information that even the experts don't know because you're uh -huh. actually specializing in yeah. a topic that other doctors don't even spend time on. Yeah. And that's not to say one is better than the worst. It's just the reality of it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys, um, I know a small portion of our audience is hoping that oh, we no. will bring out a few accents during Are this they? episode. <laughs> Are they though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so no, but when when someone actually uses the word y'all in their review, I think that entitles me to attempt to, okay. to bring out the the South Carolina in me that, that got instilled when I was a child. I, until I, what age? Until I lived there when I was a seven till twelve. Okay. So so it might take a couple lines to get into this. But it might it take the entire review to get into it. But by that <laughs> so, last line. So this is uh, Elise Gill. And I have another one I'm going to have you read oh. too. So Elise Gill writes, okay. <laughs> I'm apologizing ahead of time. Okay. Every week, I wait for a new episode of this podcast to come out. I have listened to every single episode. I love the banter and the camarad camar camaraderie the two of you have, <laughs> have together on the show. And I love the friendship y'all have found through this fight. Oh, God. Since listening to this podcast, I have grown so much in my knowledge of vaccines, informed consent, and diseases. Bless your hearts. <laughs> Bless you, hi. You guys are welcome. Thanks, Elise. Oh my for, gosh! Uh, okay, your, the uh, review, review was amazing. The accent was not. <laughs> okay. Like I wish I had one of those big hooks from like Apollo show, <laughs> and I can just pull you <laughs> off the stage. Okay, no. I, I oh can my have, god, that was so bad. I can have you read the next one because the next one requires one of us to be from Russia. Oh no! And I totally could not do Russia. I thought I was going to do the um, the southern accent. Now I'm. Well, all no, confused. that's coming up later. Yeah, oh, that's no. good. So this is from John. Potvin in February. He uh, he wrote a really nice review that I thought uh, Melissa from Russia. I don't, I don't know what your last name would be. From Melissa Russia. Ski. <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> that would be from Poland, but that's okay. okay. Well, okay. I I um I lived in Poland, but then I moved to Russia. So. Okay, so here you go. It's uh, that's right there. It's oh my the god. Top one. Which one? <laughs> the top one. Oh my God, with the writing all over it? Yeah, well, no, that's highlighting, I think. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Oh gosh, I wasn't ready for this. Um, hmm. Dichotomous? How am I supposed to do that? Dichotomous <laughs> in a Russian accent. I don't even know how to start. Um, you gotta feel it. Let's see. Thank you both for promoting civil discourse on this touchy subject. I will <laughs> don't laugh. I believe this dualistic and dichotomous thinking is unhealthy practice, and I've heard nothing but good questions and conversations stemming from a place of kindness and concern with this show. <laughs> Love to Russia. 
<laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was terrible. Well, thank you, John. No, I, I hope John's from Russia. I, what if he's from like John is so Ukraine offended right now. or somewhere he's else? So I apologize if you're, if you're not really from Russia. But no, what I liked about this review and what I often see actually from from people of foreign nationalities, they often bring kind of a a higher level of thinking to some of these issues. And the way they, they articulate it in English is, is often very impressive to me. So how like he talks using about- using dichotomous. Yeah, yeah, dichotomous yeah. and dualistic. First of all, I'm like, what do those words mean again? And and but that, that's exactly what coronavirus is doing as well. It's, you know, there's, there's two sides. There's like, there's two extreme sides. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, as he says, um, uh, that's an unhealthy practice to think that way right. because almost everybody in the vaccine conversation is right in the middle. The reality is, right. yes, yeah. but they want to present the argument like it's either you're super anti-vaccine right. or you support vaccines and therefore support mandates. Which yeah, so I thought that was silly. a very intelligent um, review that I appreciated. And, and when I saw his name was semi-Russian, I was like, yes, oh, let's get there. For the record, <laughs> I can only do the Russian accent if there are a lot of words that begin in W because <laughs> Then I pronounce them like a V and it kind of gets me into my zone. But it's got to be what a wonderful world. You know, like you have to have a lot of Vs. <laughs> and if I don't have the, this is the problem is I didn't have the Ws. His name so. is John Pot, Potvin. So there you go. Okay. John Potwin. All right. See, I can't even do Russian. No. So that, that was so bad. I apologize to everybody if that was really awful. <laughs> Just remember, it wasn't my choice. Okay. okay so, I'm going to read the next one. All right. So... I'll tell you the next one that I am picking here. Um, this was cool. I like this review. She said, this is she or he or she. This was the first podcast I've ever listened to and binge listened to the entire two seasons while working over the last couple of weeks. And I'm dying to listen to a third season. I tried finding other podcasts when I was finished, but you set the bar pretty high. Not only is the information on point, well-sourced and easily digestible, the whole vibe of every episode was fun and engaging. I'm an ex-vaxxer and have immersed myself in research and education over the last three years since we woke up after a scary vaccine reaction causing my baby to be hospitalized and being able to multitask education during work and hearing some new information and more dynamic to the multifaceted issue has been invaluable, an invaluable resource and method of delivery. Thank you for all you do. And I like how, you know, we do hear that a lot is that it's easily digestible, that we, yeah. we put the information in a way that makes sense. And then people do like it's engaging and it's fun. And I, it's, it's ironic. Honestly, it's ironic with this topic that this could ever be fun. Um, I think it's just because I either don't get enough sleep <laughs> or I'm just happy to talk to another adult because I'm home with children all day long that I just, I get a little goofy. Um, yeah, and so I think yeah. it kind of, this is obviously not a fun topic, right? but the reality is the stress of all of this mm -hmm. and being immersed in this all the time, we're looking for that companionship, camaraderie, support of others that are also in this. It makes us feel better. It makes us feel like yeah. this is not a huge uphill battle that we know it is um, because it's impossible, absolutely impossible to be in this if we did not have the support system that we have in our groups and the other parents and all the other medical professionals that have all come together. It makes you feel less lonely, less isolated. Oh, yeah. It gives you renewed energy uh, to continue fighting this kind of stuff. So I guess it ends up coming across as fun, <laughs> like, but that was never the intention. And I don't, even on the serious episodes, I try to keep a straight face yeah, as yeah. long as I can. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it works. Like if yeah. I'm tired, Yeah. but if I'm not tired, then I start laughing somewhere along the line in there. And I know that's, maybe that's totally unprofessional. Well, you know, but I've said it uh, early on in the podcast um, a long time ago that you and I need this to be fun. We need it to be interesting for, for us and we need to enjoy these conversations. And I mean, I, I need to look forward to the three hours we're going to spend on an afternoon doing this instead of me working or going Trudging. to do something fun or, uh, yeah. or you know. having a life, like a real <laughs> yeah. life that doesn't involve all yeah. this data. Right. And so I think that's maybe the way that you and I are able to really thrive on this is, yeah, we can, to me, it literally is, it's as fun as I hope it sounds to the listeners. I mean, I, I know 
me myself, I'm personally sitting here having fun, enjoying these conversations. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the one thing that I, I've said this to some of my friends who are also in this movement. The one thing I really appreciate about people that have this awareness, the awareness that, you know, informed consent, medical freedom, that understand vaccine injury is that these people are more open hearted than an average person. Mm -hmm. They're more willing to share. I mean, you'll, you'll meet a stranger in this movement at a rally. And within two minutes, they've told you maybe the hardest thing they've ever gone through, which was an injury to their child and how it devastated their family, their marriage, their whole of, uh, you know, world broken cr into crumbles and how they've just now yeah. been able to come to come out of their house and come to these rallies now to try to fight for this. It's like you'll get that in the first few minutes of meeting somebody. Yeah. And they're willing to just lay it all out there for you. And they are willing to just be honest and be giving. And you find another medical freedom person and you're like, hey, you're one of my people. And there yeah. is that sense in this community of being very open hearted, being um, very honest, being authentic and being very kind. And I think that's one of the things I hate so much about what the media tries to do to our movement and make us look a certain way. Oh, we're dangerous. Oh, we're spreading misinformation. These are some of the most loving and kind parents yep. you'll oh, ever yeah. come across whose lives have been devastated or the, the lives of their friends and family have been devastated. And they put them in this position where they have to be the outlier. They have to be the one going against the grain. It's not comfortable to be the one going against the grain. It takes constant work and mm -hmm. a very thick skin. And I get that a lot of people, gosh, you must have yeah. a thick skin. I'm like, well, to be honest with you, it took me six years to get here yeah. because at the beginning it was really hard for me. Because like I said, I, I don't like confrontation. I don't like when somebody doesn't like me. And when somebody tries to attack me, I'm like, try to defend myself, wait, wait, wait. And I realized it wasn't helping. All right. And right. so I had to learn the hard way. Basically, you do you. You do what uh -huh. you do. You bring the content you want to bring. The people that get it will get it. And the people that don't, don't. And it's all good. And you find those that, that you align with. And you stick with those. And you don't worry about the rest. But this movement contains some of the kindest, most loving, most generous, courteous, and sweet people that I've ever come across, which is the absolute opposite of what um, the other side wants to portray us as. And so I think that open heartedness goes a long way and why we're able to find the connections we yeah, do with each other. Yeah, yeah the um, Ash Tim uh, back in January uh, wrote that, you know, he or she didn't even like podcasts, but it's um, been listening on headphones while doing dishes and suddenly uh, will laugh out loud because of the hilarity. It's probably something I said. Most but, uh, definitely. Um, hilarity between Melissa and Dr. Bob. And how nearly every time I'm listening and I think, oh, but, but what about this? In the very next breath, Melissa is asking the same question on my behalf. I love on, that. On this uh, listener's behalf. Yeah, that was, I love the connection. I love it that some people feel like they literally are having the conversation with us. And right. I'll, I'll read that later. Someone actually, someone actually said that later on uh, that I'll get to. Um, and then Kara Witt uh, um, wrote actually a, a very long review. I won't read the whole thing. I just kind of highlighted a few things. What I'm basically is highlighting is parts of reviews that really spoke to me personally or really hit the nail on the head of, of kind of why we do this. And um, this made uh, the podcast made her uh, more confident to speak about this with others that terrified her in the past. But now she feels charged, empowered and equipped. You're a wonderful team. I love your chemistry together or, or I should say alchemy. Um, which I love because I, I found that early on with you and I, we had this, the, this chemistry of how our ideas would bounce back and forth off of each other and feed off of each other. And everything I was ever thinking, you were able to then articulate in a, a much clearer way. And then you were able to broaden my understanding of this whole issue but we, and, in ways that I never would have. We've mostly had that same viewpoint on almost everything. Yeah, probably yeah, the coronavirus yeah. thing was probably the first thing that we sort of had differences on at the beginning there. Yeah, yeah. And and the way you said... Which was okay. Yeah, but the way you said everyone sort of chose sides on coronavirus and are sticking to it. Mm -hmm. They're like, no matter what right. the data show, they are not changing their position. Mm -hmm. I've, I've shifted my position kind of back and forth. I've fluctuated mm -hmm. um, based on new data and right. new understanding. So I, and I think I'll continue to fluctuate as we read, as we get more data. And 
But she continues that the banter and silliness are challenging for some listeners, but for her, it's one of the parts that keeps her listening. Well, that's what you've always said. Yeah, yeah. You've always said, we need to have like this kind of stuff because a lot of people like it. And then I say, no, I want this to be more like an investigative (laughs) podcast where we're going into these deep issues and keep the the weightedness of it and the seriousness of it. And you're like, oh, but people like when we're lighthearted. And it's been really hard to find that balance because I want to bring you guys like this crazy up to date stuff. (laughs) And it's, and it's hard to do that when making jokes about stuff and doing southern accents and russian <laughs> accents but then for some people this is such a heavy topic that hearing right. that fun part gives them a lightness to their day which actually helps them so i don't know what right. the answer is right well she says when sometimes my brain is too full mm. and my heart is overwhelmed at injustice mm-hmm. she finds a lot of just relief right and in, in the in the comic relief and and when i got to know you and know you know the the fun side of your personality because the the data side of your of your brain is 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 amazing but the fun side of your personality i really wanted to bring that out in these conversations because that that again really energizes and empowers people just the personality side of it it's not always just about the information and you need to bring me out of my shell because i'm clearly (laughs) so quiet and shy and you're like you know you need to open up and say a few things (laughs) you know there have been so many reviews on dr bob let melissa talk more she doesn't say enough but she says um and she has to say i vote to this is the same reviewer i vote to keep the song not that you're taking votes um, it feels like an anthem of sorts um, for those in this in this community, and then she really loves it when I welcome her in. So it kind of welcomes her into a safe place and a a field to learn things. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate it. It's a very long review, but a yeah, lot of I, very I had the heartfelt. Same one. Uh, I saved that same one. Oh yeah, because I yeah. liked it. But it's yeah. funny. I was going to pick different parts to talk about of that review. Okay, isn't that funny? Yeah, uh, that we both saw different sides of that as being the highlight. Um, I want to read this one, which I think is so great. It says, I listened to episode 82, and this one has gotten a lot of uh, play. This is the meeting Jimmy Kimmel episode, just like oh, I yeah. got a lot of traffic on my Facebook post yeah, about it. that was And she, she said, I listened to this episode of the vaccine conversation meeting Jimmy Kimmel today, and boy, did I need it. The other episodes are great, factual and informational, but this one was different. I've been struggling lately trying to figure out how to manage my anger, guilt, and frustration about my son's vaccine injury and turn it into something positive. Mm -hmm. I just want people to listen to me and to understand my grief. To do that, we need to connect with people and show them that vaccine injury is real. Every single emotion that we feel about this is real. We are parents, siblings, and loved ones of the vaccine injured, and we have to be their voice. I love Melissa's real raw and emotional experience that she had with Jimmy Kimmel. I felt all of those emotions that she described in my own experiences, and she pushed me to want to do more and to do it effectively. Words and experiences are powerful, and this is how we're going to make a difference in this movement. Keep it up. You may not know it, but you keep some of us going even when we feel like giving up. God bless you both. God bless this movement. The truth will prevail. It always does. And I love that this you don't realize it, but you keep some of us going when we feel like giving up. Mm-hmm. What you guys don't realize is you do the same thing for us. Yeah. Like when I get messages like that, it's like, okay, you can't stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> like as exhausting yeah. as it may be. Yeah. And um, for example, during this whole coronavirus thing, you know, I'm, I post maybe three to four times a day. I know. And I'm posting something. And I don't post three or four times yeah, a and, day. And I didn't yeah. used to, but I'm posting something that is either an article I'm sharing, it's a status update where it's getting you to think about something or something that I've thought about and I'm wondering where people are, you know, um, or it's a meme I've made with a certain quote or piece of information or it's actual statistical information that I'm bringing to the forefront. Sometimes it's a truth post. Mm -hmm. And those things take a long time to prepare. Like it might not look like it takes a long time, but they do. And it's like, it's been a lot of work over the last several weeks. But what happens is when you feel like, like you're gaining followers that are people that are interested in this topic and they're people that are valuing the information and feel like there's nowhere else they can go to get it. I've had like probably hundreds of comments by now that have said to me, 
this is the page I come to when I want to look at information on coronavirus, like as if it's a wow. news source, a type of news yeah. source. So I feel obligated. I feel obligated to be finding the best experts, finding the best articles to break them down, to bring them to people. So they've got it all in one place. And it's, it is, it's, it's heavy. Sometimes there's a lot of pressure because I feel like, oh my gosh, it's been four hours. Like I need to put something out to keep, cause there's so much information on this yeah. and I've saved way more than I've shared uh, an article, you know, a study study something. And I keep thinking, God, I'd, I'd love to post about that. But in order to do it, I know I have to write this detailed explanation that simplifies something that is not simple and puts it in a way. What's what's challenging about Facebook is you can't bold, you can't underline, you can't use italics. Yeah. You know, italics. So it's just literally text. How do you write text in a way that resonates with people and separates uh, the important things from the not so important things? How do you keep it short and sweet? But how do you keep it data based? And how do you do all that and engage people, you know, in a short amount of time? It's just you'd be surprised how much goes into these little teeny posts I make in a day. But it's because of people sending me messages. Mm -hmm that say, you don't, I, I had just yeah. a friend the other day. Uh, I haven't talked to you in a long time and I just want you to know, or I have some from high school. I haven't spoken to you since high school. Wow. And, and I have my AP physics teacher actually commenting on my stuff, which is great. Oh, Cause he's so like, cool. he's like, you are so good with your common sense and the way that your linear mm. thinking works. And I back up what you're saying. And he, he didn't know anything about vaccine injury um, until a couple of years ago, kind of viewing my page. But, you know, again, AP physics teacher, this guy is a science man. He's educated. Um, and then I'll, I'll get people going, I know we haven't talked in all these years. I just want to tell you, I know you're taking a lot of heat for being, having this unpopular opinion, but you're putting out such good information. People need to hear this. They need to hear these other experts. Yeah. Yeah. And so reviews that we're reading now to you and messages like I'm talking to you, it's sometimes when we feel overwhelmed and we feel tired and we feel like, oh, I don't want to have to do this, but you realize people need it and they are benefiting from it and yeah. it's empowering them and it's helping them to feel better about the way that they feel right now. Um, it does inspire us and encourages us. So it's just funny to get a review that says, you guys keep us going even when we're tired because I want to say right back to you. You guys do the same thing for me. Yes. I don't know if the same is for you. Oh yeah. But I know. Very I mean, it just so. inspires me to keep yeah. going. Yeah. And every every time we have one of those live events and we meet people after, yeah. And you're hugging people and they're telling you you have no idea how much you've made a difference. It's like those are the moments that stick with you and you go, it's worth it all. This is all yeah. worth it. Yeah. Because, you know, like we always say, we're not getting paid to do this. This is not a money-making opportunity, right. despite what the other side might think. Um, in fact, I've had people say on my Facebook page, like, well, clearly you're being monetized. Uh, by who? <laughs> you see me advertising anybody? Like, are you joking? Like, uh, you know, building up followers over time is just something you do by giving good content. And uh, it's funny that yeah. people think that somehow you're being, you know, supported financially. Like, I wish, I wish that was the case we do this because we know we're helping people and by you guys connecting with us virtually or in person it inspires us to keep going yeah well um shauna brianne is from the south yes and she is inspired and so you can uh if melissa is also from the south you guys didn't know this <laughs> why did you write um, all over the review so I, well i highlighted the the sections i thought were oh, you yeah. can just read the whole thing so you know you want. can change your highlighter so that it sees through a little bit more so it's not as opaque okay because this highlighter <laughs> yes. is going like right through the thing this looks if you guys could just see what i'm looking at right now all right okay hi <laughs> hi y'all i know y'all love reading the review so i'm finally writing my review me and Melissa have the same humor, listening to her talk in this accent and joke in this accent is like listening to myself. I was injured by the HPV series, so the work y'all do in this fight means so much to me. Y'all give me the courage to be more vocal about my parenting and personal decisions, and you give me the information to be able to be confident in defending those decisions. And I can't read the end of this because you cut it off. <laughs> Thank you, Shona Brianne, my favorite podcast. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. 
that was somebody um, was here way know. more fun than uh, than me just reading it myself um, somebody named georgia just came here georgia <laughs> that's my that's georgia. my name of my georgia southern Melissa. Accent. <laughs> georgia <laughs> suzanne <laughs> georgia roves <laughs> georgia roves <laughs> So, um, uh, Roz Best, oh, um, yeah, he wrote, um, uh, I hope more doctors will take the time to read the research and look at the faces of their patients and feel compelled to do the right thing, share the knowledge, fight for the rights of others and leave a legacy their families will be proud of. And that, that really touched me because, um, that's so important to me and I, I mean, you and I do this on the podcast and we talk to people and you, we post for people on Facebook, but I love that I get to sit with families and talk to them like directly and guide them and help them understand this decision and literally, I guess, be such a huge influence on the course and the health of their children's lives just to be able to sit there. And I feel like so many doctors just look at vaccination as an automatic necessary right. and mandated part of being at their office and they like this person writes they um won't take the time to re read the research and look at the faces of their patients and feel compelled to do the right thing and that's what really drew me to this i realized informed consent was the right thing to do it that's what's mandatory and this and is a I complicated could not topic do that it's not like this is simple right Right. This is not whether or not you give a vitamin D supplement to your child in liquid drops and that just like some kind of simple little things. This is so right. complicated. It involves so many layers mm -hmm. and it involves a lot about medical history and family history and understanding side effects and everybody's body's different. And uh, it should be something doctors are willing to talk about. You, you would want your patients to be so educated on this that they could help educate others because they're so well knowledgeable now. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I was a personal trainer, that was one of the things I really liked is I gave a lot of people, as you can imagine, nutritional data and sports medicine data based on the theories and ideologies about why you want to move your muscles that way. Not I'm going to go work somebody out for an hour. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw it as an opportunity to teach somebody how to do it themselves, because if I trained somebody to get have an education base where they were able to pass that on to somebody else, then I'm really doing my job. I don't want I didn't want to be one of those people that's like, oh, well, I'm you're only going to feel like you can do this when I'm there because I'm going to push you to work out and do more push ups and be more sweaty. And uh, like, that's what it was. And what, there was education behind it. Mm -hmm. Like I would sit on that very first like free episode, uh, free um free session that you get at the beginning. And I would go into all this lengthy detail on nutrition. I would go over time every time. It didn't, I wasn't getting paid at all to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like if I gave you enough facts, enough information, and you remember even half of it, you're going to be able to take that and use it to your life in the future. But yeah. I'll tell you, the person, personal trainers I work with were not like that. They were like, the time you work out with me is when you work out with me and I'm going to work you out and that's the end of it. But I see everything as an opportunity for education. And if I've done all the study, the anatomy study and the muscular study and the nutritional study, I want to share that knowledge with people the same way I feel like I've researched vaccines now. And I want to share that with somebody so that they already know the answers when those questions come up. I don't want somebody to rely yeah. on me. Just like as you're a doctor, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want my patients to always have to come to me oh, totally. to ask me the questions. I want to inform them in a way that they now can answer those questions on their own because you've done such a good job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got a, a helicopter okay. friend flying by. This is like censorship 101, guys. They found out we were doing the podcast. <laughs> they traced the signal. It's going to hover right above us. They know we're here. <laughs> They're confirming with their video equipment that we are, in fact, He's circling at my house doing a podcast. <laughs> and they said, yep, we got them. We've got a visual. <laughs> he really is circling. No, I think his name, away. what's his name? His name's called Duke. The name of the, there's this like hot, there's this um, helicopter that circles around here. He actually has oh, okay. a name named right. Duke. Right. No, but that's so true. I never want patients just to listen to my opinion. Mm. Or if they come to me and just say, you know, Dr. Bob, tell us what to do. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I tell them what to read, what to understand. They need to learn a lot. Yeah, it's important. And then I help guide, you know, I help guide them because they really, they really need to know, you know, both sides of this issue. Kudos to that. 
Um, I have another review here from Unity Education mm -hmm. Group that says, love, love, love this podcast. I'm so thankful for all the evidence-based information. I appreciate them sharing their findings and articles they cover. You can do your own research, just like what we're saying. At the end of the day, people will always have different opinions on topics, but we all need to show each other respect for our personal choices. We should have the right for medical freedom and the choice of what to put into our bodies. This podcast sheds light on information that is otherwise buried down so deep it's hard to find. Not surprising at all. See, so you see that? Mm -hmm. We're shedding light on information that is buried. Yeah. So oh, what yeah. we always say is this information is there. It's the CDC, it's the California Department of Public Health, it's the World Health Organization. We're not making this up, but if you're not researching, if you're not doing the deep dive, you'll never find this. Yeah. And this is that this is how they get around their whole like, well, it's out there. We're being transparent, but they don't make it widely available to people. And uh, sometimes you do have to kind of go, you know, me, I'll always like start on one article and it leads me to like this one and then this one mm -hmm. and then this one. And I'm before I know it, I'm like, you know, 18 degrees of separation way over here. But how else would an average person get there? And people ask us all the time, how do you research? How do you find how to how to research? And it's like you literally just have to go looking and you have to go searching for certain keywords and things. Yeah. And uh, so I thought that was nice that she yeah. brought that up. And I love that you're so good at that. I mean, you... Um... Well, I enjoy it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I'm good at it. I just, I enjoy it. Right. Which is important. I yes. Because you don't. No, I do You've not. You've said that straight out. Like, I don't. I don't like it. It's so funny. Yeah. So, like, if I have two hours off in the out in the late afternoon after work, I'm, I'm grabbing my book, sitting in the backyard in the sun, either finishing my coffee from the morning or having a matcha or having like a late afternoon cocktail or something. To me, that's an amazing two hours. Mm. Your amazing two hours is, having is probably nap time every day you know we and you're not sitting in your backyard laying out in the sun oh i wish you are researching and researching and reading and researching I am. because you like it to you I that's like re it. relaxing well i don't yeah. know that it's relaxing it's just it's a constant quest yeah. it's a constant quest to know more because you know what happens is every conversation brings up more questions for me so like yeah. if i post something that says how about this? Like, like I just posted today about alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption and sales has gone up up to 55% according to the Nielsen ratings since lockdown. 55%, wow. which is like very intense. And then in the article, they talk about alcohol consumption being related to respiratory infection and how you're more likely to get something like coronavirus. So here we're put into a situation where we're locked down. People are drinking more. It's making people weaker and more susceptible to infection. And then people are getting infected. It's like it's just this yeah. awful cycle that we're basically perpetuating with the policies that we've chosen. You know, this is in my opinion. But sometimes you'll post something like that and then somebody will come on and go, and then what about this? this also makes me think of this and then yeah. i'm like oh great now i gotta go look that up because i'll put it in my notes yeah. okay here's yeah. another thing i need to follow up on because i want to whenever something is a point is made i want to get all of the little what are they called um, tangents tangents yeah or like like on a river you've got all these little tributaries, tributaries. yeah i was thinking that's what it was <laughs> so you know these little tributaries i want to also fall up on all those so that when somebody says yeah. well what about this you can go uh ah, here's here's that yeah. here's the answer to that yeah. that blocks this yeah. okay let's go over here that blocks <laughs> this and so process of elimination we end up with the theory that this is going to equal to more mm -hmm. infection or this is going to equal to increased domestic abuse or violence or whatever right. the thing is right. and i like i have to investigate all the possibilities yeah. and so usually when it is nap time or nighttime, I'm thinking, okay, I need to work on this or I'll be scrolling and find a great article and go, oh man, I'm gonna have to break this down and make a post. And sometimes <laughs> I'll be doing that at night before I go to bed, yeah. I'll get it all ready so that I know in the morning I'll have it ready to copy and paste and post. And to me, it's like a type of success. Like yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. I've gone through this. I find this interesting. If I find it interesting, I know other people will find it interesting. And the research element, I just can't stop doing. Yeah. It's like, it's so um, addicting. It's like, once you look into one thing, then, then I go, somebody will go, well, that wasn't true for Taiwan. And then I'm like, Great. Here we go. Now I got to go start at the beginning. Let's, I got to learn everything there is to know about Taiwan. Yeah, what was yeah. Taiwan? How many cases did they have? What was their mortality rate? What yeah. was their lockdown policy? What, what happened in the, in the past with their flu yeah. seasons? What's their hospital system like? Do they believe in masks or no masks? What kind of government do they have? I mean, it's like you have to go into oh, all wow. these types of details wow. to make your opinion so that in one comment in a city group, you can give one sentence yeah. and go, well, it's not like Taiwan. Who's a this, 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 and this? And of course, nobody's even paying attention to that and it probably goes into the nowhere. But 
I'm the type that wants to know. <laughs> and I want to make sure there's not much I don't know. Yeah. Because I don't like that feeling. Yeah. I don't like that feeling. And that, that, so that drives me to continue looking yeah. where you're like, you're okay with not knowing. And, and you're totally okay with yeah. being like, I don't know. Yeah. Like you say that so often about certain things. I'll be like, I'll be like, oh, um, you know, Justice has a rash because he had this allergy to these, what I have concluded through my investigative reports was from a diaper that he was using. But at the time I remember, I remember saying, Oh, look at this rash. And you're just like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> dude, you're the expert. So what I want from you is a definitive answer of exactly what it is, but you're okay with yeah. not having a definitive answer. Yeah. And it be, and you know what the truth is with children, there are a lot of things you just don't know. Right. They right. resolve themselves on their own. Yeah. You don't know what caused it. You don't know what was the source of it, but whatever it's passed yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And, and actually you've probably taught me <laughs> to be more like that because I'm more like, I need answers, but you'd be like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> Aren't you the pediatrician? <laughs> I know. Yeah, that, that's one know. of the fun challenges of being a pediatrician. <laughs> like, there's a lot of things we know, and then and then there's some things like we don't know, but we sort of know when it's okay that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And I see all kinds of rashes, and that's probably yeah. the, that's probably the most common scenario. And I'll just tell a patient, well, it's not an infectious cont contagious disease, and it doesn't look like anything serious. Um, you know, it's one of those rashes. I just don't know what it is. And we'll just watch what happens and the kids are going to be fine. Let's and, see. <laughs> and of no, course, no, any then, parent is just like, oh, like no, I need to No, know but it's more. kind of my job to, to help them feel comfortable yeah. with that because then I'll, but then I'll see two other rashes. And I'll be like, oh yeah, that rash is a problem. We need, we need to do something. Or I'll say that rash is a problem and I know we need to do something, but I'm not really sure what that is. Go see a dermatologist. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's kind of the fun of of life as a pediatrician is knowing, knowing, but, but it's so funny how you, how you say you just need to track it down and get, you know, look at every tributary. I will say like, that was me, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And, um, I'm 10 years older than you, but, uh, but that was me a long time ago. I feel like I'm, I'm tired now. Yeah. I mean, I, so to me, I'm more about doing the stuff that, that helps my, my brain and my heart thrive and, and is is fun like like this and and writing, but yeah, I'm 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 done going down all the little tributaries. You do that for me. I can't. Yes, so I mean, the you. thing is, I wish I could be. I wish I could just be like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna watch Netflix tonight once the kids go to bed <laughs> and not browse my phone for three hours finding all different articles yeah. from across the world. I would love to be able to turn it off. In fact, sometimes I go, okay, Melissa, you're not opening up the rabbit hole tonight. You can watch a movie and mm -hmm. just get lost in something mindless um, because it's not totally healthy to yeah. constantly yeah. be, but I have a hard time. Of course I can only focus at night or when the kids are sleeping because with all that oh, yeah. background chatter, it's really hard for me to delve into this as a medical topic or scientific topic. But I mean, I find joy in finding pieces of information, especially when you share something that are going, Oh my God, this is a great share. Yeah. Thank you so much. And you're thinking, Oh, I uncovered something <laughs> like, Oh, cool. Um, a lot of things I share are just my thoughts on something. Yeah. And, and what's cool is that it resonates with other people. Yeah. They're going, I was thinking the same thing yeah. or I wondered that same thing. <laughs> and then you go, okay, this is nice. Let's just open up the conversation just the same way we do here. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny because um, back to our reviews, Alyssa John, 2020, actually, she thinks she's actually the third member of our podcast. Yes, I yeah, like it. Yeah, she's I love this podcast. I've caught most of the episodes. When I told my husband about it, I kept saying, we talked about whooping cough today. <laughs> and then we talked about the flu shot. And then I catch <laughs> myself because I wasn't actually doing the talking. You guys were. That's hilarious. But I think that says something that I felt like I was still part of the conversation. That is so Yeah, funny. that was totally awesome. Love I that. love that. Um, VMAT850 is very certain that you are his spirit animal. Yes. Yes. What a compliment that is. I love that. Actually, yeah. just the phrase spirit animal is so nice. I love that. Yeah. And then Mo Flowers um, <laughs> talks about, you know, doing, uh, uh, he loves what we are doing and the work you're putting in. I have started working nights at a major medical center and I've worked there for a long time. Now I feel like I'm not crazy anymore about what I've discovered about vaccine injury. And I love getting those. It. Like I said, it's lonely that. to be on your own here. I have, yeah. the last one I have, um, it says, I adore you both. You two have a good dynamic. You're engaging, well-versed. I'm addicted to your podcast. 
I flew through the episodes, now re-listening. I've heard a lot of people say that. They're yeah. addicted to it. Yeah. I love when you have guests, love the topics, feel like we could be old friends with the two of you. Yeah. Like you're so down to earth and relatable. I'm always on the edge of the seat with the data and information. It's been, again, empowering and reaffirming to me. I recommend it to this others. I know you guys have busy lives outside of what you do for this community, but it never takes away from the effort you put into your research, nor does it take away from the passion that you guys have for the fight. So I love um, I yeah. love getting reviews like like this. Again, it's yeah. just so encouraging. Yeah, and um, Pissed Sag to go four says i binge watched i binge listened to everything i'm sort of sad and lost because i don't have anything to listen to now well actually i went back and listened to all the episodes again i'm in oregon and this last session they tried passing a law and i did my best to get involved and after listening to your podcast i feel even more confident and armed with knowledge and Again, ultimately, that's that's what that's about. This, that's my last review that I kind of uh, looked. I looked basically over the last six months, and and I read every single review uh, except the one star ones. And I just thought <laughs> I would. There are so many more that I oh could have gosh, read on here. Oh my gosh, there are so many, yeah. especially yeah. from the beginning. I couldn't go past oh, yeah. back to July, but uh, past, past yeah. January. But um, there were so many at the beginning that were really sweet. People really opening up. The ones I yeah. shared today are from Immunity Education Group Facebook page, so people tend to be a little shorter there but yeah. some of our itunes reviews have been so mm -hmm. so sweet and personal stories and and i want to give a, just a, a special thank you to our uh, monthly supporters you know on our podcast uh um, jenna lisa nancy sandra justine nancy again susan anna brooke veronica christy rebecca Lindsay, christine Kristen, jennifer macy dom michelle cameron sarah rick and Keely, and what I love, I just, I just love that people are willing to, to not only you know we get a lot of donations as well. I get a lot of you know one-time donations, and I, to me, we appreciate all of it. Um, it all goes to the you know to the work we do. Um, but it, for me, it's it, it's something special about a monthly supporter, and that mm -hmm. I just feel like someone likes and appreciates so much you know what we do that they're willing to just have like just have a little something come our way uh towards the nonprofit immunity yeah. education group every single month and to me that just it's just gives me a little bit of encouragement again not only do they like us and listen but they're willing to just kind of go that little extra so i don't know i just uh, appreciate that Thanks, guys. And we have um, some cool topics that um, we're going to be coming with soon. Uh, one of them is going to be discussing fake news, Ooh, yeah. which yeah. I can't wait to talk about yeah. how they do it, how you look at these articles and you can see there's like a certain routine and pattern that they follow and how to look through it and decipher it and show others to do the same. And we'll use some examples and break it down. I just recently did a post on that. I also want to cover, in case people are asking here and wondering, there's some new mysterious, what they call corona coronavirus-like illness in children that's showing up. It has to do with some bruised knuckles, which is really interesting, right. and some different things. Uh, this sounds really scary, and basically what they're saying is these kids are positive, have been positive for COVID, and now they recovered, and now weeks later they're having this new mystery illness that can potentially be serious. What they're not telling you, if you look past the headline, is that this is happening in cases that are not positive for COVID. Okay. So it's obviously right. can't entirely be related to coronavirus, but I want to go into that. So I found yeah. some great articles we can break down. You're talking about uh, Kawasaki disease? Well, they're saying it's like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Okay. It's like that, but, they th right. but they're thinking, and I think this could be a way to scare people a little bit, that it's related to the coronavirus. So anyway, we'll go into that, yeah. and we've got lots of cool things coming up. Um, Including an airplane flying by. Is another that helicopter. That's another helicopter. Another helicopter. You guys, that's they're twice. <laughs> We're just sharing real data okay <laughs> this is not a conspiracy theory these are real reviews real reviews real, yeah. Real yeah, but I, I wanted to um add a, a quick thank you i want to give you some of these these are um these are from honey acres uh honeyacres.com it's a family-owned business where they make um honey treats and what and th these are what i gave you to mm -hmm. drive right. home with from the fundraiser what's crazy is these are unsweetened chocolate and honey um, are the ingredients. And then there's a raspberry, uh, natural raspberry flavor. There's mm -hmm. a, one with um, orange extract. There's one with mint I'm eating the mint oil. right now. 
and and then there's one that's just plain mm. unsweetened chocolate i mean how may mm. one of them is dark chocolate i think the mint is dark chocolate but most of these are literally unsweetened and they rely on the honey to mix like you bite into it mm -hmm. it's all creamy right. and yummy and and so i've appreciated these because this is sort of like my my snack you know over this coronavirus thing but but um they sent us the cutest uh uh uh, card that their kids painted. I'll give it to you. I have mm. it in my bag just out of sight. But uh, oh, nice. um, yeah, their kids actually colored a card. They wrote this big mm. letter thanking us and they donated a bunch of, of uh, Honey Acres uh, candies to our um, to our uh, fundraisers. But what spoke to me is they reached out a few weeks ago and they're mm. like, oh, we know you, you had to postpone your your fundraiser and they wanted to kind of tell me how to make sure their, their candy is going to stay good to the oh, next nice. fundraiser. But th to me, it was like it was so important to them that uh, that just to reconnect with me and remind me that they get, that they gave us all these little free samples yeah. so i wanted to bring you I some but, um, um, but i love it when people connect with us and then kind of keep connected and sort of keep reaching out again and and i love making those kind of new relationships and new friendships in this fight and even though like you know, there's you know people I've never met out there to have them kind of keep circling back and keep kind of uh reaching out to us again and and so that someday when we do meet I'll be like oh my gosh you guys are the you know the honey right. eggers people thank you so much I loved those they're so yummy thank you for supporting us and thank you not for not just sending it our way and then that was it but your kids wrote right. us a card you wrote us a nice letter and you followed up and I don't know I just I love those kind of connections, and I guess I kind of dream of a world where we're all, we win this fight, and we can all be, you know, be we can all be one happy society, all working together and loving each other and supporting each other and being friends, and and we kind of, you know, win this big battle against pharma and big government. Or you know? <laughs> we can all be forced vaccinated and microchipped. <laughs> Living in yes. small little containment camps. Yes. It could go either that way. That sounds awesome. It could actually go either way. Which Democratic candidate do I vote for to get that? I so Any of them. <laughs> any of them will get you to that no destination. So I'm rooting for your future. Yeah. <laughs> but I know there are some listening that sort of yeah. see what I just said as the future also. Hopefully yeah. it doesn't turn out like that. Right. Yeah. But that's awesome. And I can't wait to go on tour. I want to meet people and see people too. Because just like you're saying, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Anyway, if there are topics you want to see covered, message me on Facebook. And mm -hmm. you have a really great article or something, I will cover it whether I post about it or we bring it to the podcast. I've really relied on pe people have given, you know been sending me you know, articles and all sorts of stuff. We, we should do an episode on the two Bakersfield doctors and how their yeah, video was yeah. taken off of YouTube. Yeah. Censored yeah. because their information, even though their doctors went against what the narrative is, we should cover that because um, it's important to discuss. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. so much to always talk about. Yeah. Well, this has happy been, 100. This has been fun. I know. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. Happy 100 episode. Happy 100. And, <laughs> and I drank my whole bottle. So I'm empty. I always, so. I'm the kind of person I always need a final sip oh, when I'm done with something like that. Gotcha. If I'm at a bar or something, I can't have a final sip until I've paid my bill and I sort of get up ready That's to leave. Funny. I'm like, oh, oh that final you watch sip. too many movies. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to like be that guy that does the last swig. Yeah, like just, before, I just like, leave the twenty on the bar, and, you know, tap it. And, and yeah, right. Hey, knowing the, uh, you, bartender. knowing you, you would not do that. <laughs> yeah, can I have my change? Yeah. You know, <laughs> You'd be like, here's a dollar seventy three. No, that I have seventy three cents exactly. No, it's fine. <laughs> like you can leave two. No, no, a dollar seventy three is fine. <laughs> well, should we end this episode or should we just keep going let's end it we're going to open another uh, I wish I wish I had more oh, yeah. I'm, actually those are my last two well thanks guys this has been really really awesome and this is not a season finale or anything we're no. going to keep going but I imagine we will have to come up with a season finale sometime soon but who knows whenever Dr. Bob says he needs a break yes. <laughs> quote needs a break quote <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, stop being so hard I on Dr. Bob. I work hard. He works hard. You need to stop giving him so much <laughs> oh, <oops. laughs> So much beef. <laughs> All right, you guys. Hello. Thanks for listening. And we'll come back at you with some more data-based um, episodes. It was nice to have an opportunity for it not to be 
straight database and just to be information. Mm -hmm. Information and discussion. We love that too. And we love you guys. You make it possible. We would never be at 100 without you. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Yeah. We would have never gotten this far. Right. And not only have we maintained, but we're growing. Yeah. And, and, and you guys just you keep feeding us. Just your presence and your connection really, really feeds us. Keeps Over us going, a million so plays. Yeah. Over a million. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. All right. So thank you. And uh, we'll catch you next time on The Vaccine Wait, Conversation. Darn it. I wanted to say conversation. <laughs> you always do this. <laughs> Sorry. I've been around my kids too much. <laughs> Bickering is the new normal. It's so funny. I got here to podcast and you're like, you know, I haven't actually prepared yet. Can you take my kids outside and <laughs> you play, go play with them for a little bit? <laughs> They're new to you, so you go play. <laughs> so yeah, I got to play with their kids for like 15 minutes. And then meanwhile, Sereni is like, he's strict. <laughs> Which is so funny. Which is so funny because I'm already pretty strict. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's funny. It's a funny conversation. Anyway, yeah. All right, take care. We everybody. could no. Let's just keep going. No, let's keep okay. Talking. We're done. Are you done? Yeah, I'm on a root beer. Can't keep going anymore. <laughs> I think the music has drowned us out by this Good. time. Anyway, did you yes. say drowned? Drowned. <laughs> drowned. <laughs> That's the most funnest time I've ever had. <laughs> when I didn't get drowned. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I hope I don't lose weight too fast. <laughs> That's one of the ones I hate saying, loose. We're going to be loosing this battle, yes. and it's L-O-O-S. Guys, just cut it down to one O. You just need one. Lose is a single O. Loose is two O's. You're welcome. Really? Will you cut my mic off so okay. I can <laughs> Okay, and now we're done. <laughs> Huh? Yes, I'm leaving <laughs> all that on the show. No way. I'm in charge of that. You win. I, I don't know where the stuff <laughs> is. I forgot. It's been too long. Me neither. <laughs>Information in this podcast is for entertainment purposes only. It is not intended as medical advice. Always consult your healthcare professional for information on vaccines and infectious diseases.